Futures are higher this morning to start a new trading month. This as we look ahead to the August ADP report coming out at 8.15 a.m. Eastern Time. Joining us now, Pacific Advisors Financial Advisor Jason Rotman and joining the conversation all morning long, Polster and Maz Lanskin Partners President and author of Persuasion, Lee Carter, and Republican strategist Pinion Enterprises founder and CEO Joseph Pinion. Welcome all this morning. Thank you for being here. Jason, let's start with your thoughts on these markets right here, right now. Well, you know, my thought is that, uh, you know, the markets are seemingly invincible, although whenever anybody says that, uh, hopefully that doesn't mark the top. But at this point, I mean, the markets have withstood a lot of potentially very bearish things from the you know, horrible things going on in the world in kind of, you know, the, the Middle East, Afghanistan region, from the 4 to 5 percent headline inflation, the markets were standing that. Jay Powell saying we're, we could taper this year, the markets were standing that. So something's going on, something strange is going on, that this bullish fervor, Dagan, is not going away. And we have to ask ourselves why. And one answer could be this unprecedented, you know, not only Fed support of the markets, because they haven't quite tapered yet, but also the government could always step in tomorrow and issue more stimulus directly to the people if need be, plus the multi-trillion dollar infrastructure package. So fundamentally, there's a lot of bullish headwinds, even though, of, you know, despite all the things that I just mentioned. At what point, though, would investors want to start factoring in the, uh, the potential for terror attacks? And, and I don't mean to, you know, be dark so early in the morning, yeah. but... It, yeah. you, we have ab abandoned Afghanistan. It is a haven for terrorists of all shapes and sizes. Uh, we're reversing course and recreating the environment, the conditions that led to 20 years ago, the 9-11 terror attacks. And it was a, a point of focus for years about how do you factor in uh, or quantify uh, the impact of a terror event. And I'm curious why the market seems to be ignoring that at this point. Yeah, no, that's a fair question. And um, I, I would honestly revert back to kind of what I just focused <laughs> on, which is this crazy, unprecedented is the key word here, truly, government, you know, fiscal stimulus, multi-trillion dollar, throwing trillions of dollars at the market. Uh, that's never happened before. Uh, you know, three rounds of PPP, that's never happened before. So even with all, again, the terrorist threat, which is real, unfortunately, you have this fundamental, massive, massive, stimulatory, if that's a word, environment, which is really driving the bullish fervor, despite of everything that's going on, including what you just mentioned. The August jobs report is coming out on Friday. The estimate is for 750,000 jobs added that month. What do you the unemployment rate at 5.4 percent. What are you expecting from this report? And again, we're getting the ADP numbers on private sector job creation at 8.15 this morning. I think it actually could come in underwhelming, um, meaning less than, than 7.50. Uh, whether that's a long-term trend or a short-term blip, I actually think it's the latter. It's not a long-term trend because with this Delta variant, with businesses kind of closing down again in certain areas of, of the country, um, and world for that matter, but let's say the country, we could actually see a little bit of a reversion to lower job creation in the recent, uh, you know, 30, 60 days. Consumer confidence also dropping a, more than 11 points in August amid concerns about the Delta variant or growing concerns there. Uh, with the Michigan report, the consumer sentiment fell to a 10-year low. A lot of that was inflation. Is there any yeah. long-term effect on the markets? Uh, from kind of declining consumer confidence. Well, yeah, I mean, and that's that could be a canary in the coal mine, so to speak, as they say, uh, because you have all this bullish fervor because of these fundamentals. You have people that own that have owned assets, specifically, let's say, real estate. I mean, if you look at the real estate year over year home pricing growth, it's absolutely nuts, right? It's literally twenty plus percent in some cities. So those people probably, are, their confidence is not at a 10-year low, but not everybody owns those type of assets. So by and large, you know, middle of the bell curve, you know, financially speaking, I think people, well, and everyone really, people are beginning to feel the bite of um, inflation. They are. Which is concerning. Well, I've said, I say this over and over again, but for seven months in a row, since Joe Biden took office, that uh, inflation-adjusted wages or real wages have fallen 
all year, real wages have fallen, and we'll see what happens uh, in the jobs report out on Friday, but people are feeling it, and politicians ignoring it. Jason Rotman, thank you so much. Good to see you this morning. You're welcome. Thank you.